All right, so this video will be about indirect function. So indirect function, when I was learning about it, I've heard a lot of explanations of it. And to be honest with you, none of them made any sense. Hopefully I'll try to do a better job, but you know, sometimes it's just difficult to explain some of these functions. The essence of indirect function is not really that complicated. So uh, let me give you an example. So let's say we have a few numbers here. Doesn't matter, some of these. So if we wanted to add these numbers together, we could use the function sum. And the way we would do something like this, we would just provide it a range. In this case, B2 through B4. Close parentheses, hit enter, that would give us the sum of this. Now what indirect function is going to allow us to do is instead of passing this B2 through B4 as a range, we can pass the range as string. So what I could do, I could pass this as string like this. Now if I try it like this as text, I hit enter, I'm gonna get an error. But I can convert that string to a range by using indirect function. So if I do indirect, open parentheses and just close the parentheses in here. So now what I have is that text is inside of that indirect function and sum is around my indirect. I hit enter, it's still gonna give me the total. Now that may seem like something odd to do, why would you ever want to do that? But that's kind of the whole point of indirect function is that you can pass text as range and then use it as range and it's gonna work. And what this allows you to do is to create that range dynamically. So now you can create that text dynamically in some sort of way and then indirect will actually use it as a range and make it work. Now to be able to actually use indirect function successfully, usually you have to be pretty good with text concatenation. So concatenation, if you're not familiar with it, is basically the process of adding different pieces of text together. And you should probably watch a separate video about that, but just to go over that really quickly, if I had, let's say, text in two cells like this, I could combine them by taking this and using the and sign, which is basically the text operator here with this, and that's just gonna add them together. So if I hit enter, that will put them together. Now you can do this using different methods. You can use it using that ampersand sign. You can use it uh, with like functions like concatenate or concat. There's also join function. It doesn't matter. The point is, as long as we're able to get those strings together somehow to combine, to create a string, that's gonna work out. So for me, I'm gonna stick with this and ampersand method because that allows a lot of advantages in many cases. Another thing to keep in mind is that when you're trying to concatenate strings, you can also add your own pieces to this. So if I wanted to do John and then add my own, let's say dash in the middle, I can do the dash in quotes, that's my own text. Now if I hit enter, that's gonna be John and the dash. And then I can do another and sign to do another plus and add this piece to it. And this way I can build my own string. And whatever you pass in this quotation, it can be really anything. It doesn't have to be one character. I could use something like this, right? And that's gonna do that. So let me show you why this is useful and give you some use cases for this. So let's say we have something like this. So we have uh, this spreadsheet where we store every month separately with different billing details. And we have this total here on top. So this is our January total. I go to February, this is our February total. I go to March, this is my March total. And this goes on for 12 months until the end of the year, right? So let's say we're trying to create a summary of all those totals for each month. So I'm gonna create a new worksheet 
here. I'm going to move that as a first one and I'm going to call this summary. And what I want to happen in this, I'm just going to go on top here and type month and then we'll do JAN and then I'm going to click on this and drag it down all the way through December like that. And then I want to get the total for each month. So the January total should be this and then February total should be this and so on, right? Now I could do this using regular method like this. I could do equals, right? And then go do January and click on this, hit enter. Then I could do equals and then go to February and click on this and hit enter. And then go to March and do equal sign. You see where this is going. And I would have to do this for each one of those months. Now this is really not that bad because we only have 12 of them. But you will see that people do this a lot. They do this with months, sometimes they do this with weeks. So they have like 52 weeks and each week they will create a new tab. And on that tab, they're basically doing some calculations. Now I'm not really suggesting that this is a great idea to store your data this way, but regardless of that, people do this all the time. And indirect will actually help us to speed this up a little bit instead of doing this one by one, trying to do this equals this, this equals this, this equals this, this process. So let me show you how I can manage this with indirect. So to understand this, first of all, let's just explore this formula. So if I look at this first formula, see the formula is equals, I'm actually just gonna do this so we can just look at all those formulas like that. So let's look at all of these formulas. So if you look at this formula, my formula is equals, and then it's J N and then exclamation sign and then C4. And the next one is February C4 and then March C4. So if you look between these three different formulas, the only difference is the name of the tab. So January, February, March. And that's really the same thing that we have on this left. So if we could build this, January exclamation sign C4, using this text on the left, we should be able to actually use indirect function to make this happen without having to create separate formulas for this. So let me show you what I mean. So if I go here and do a formula, I'm gonna do equal sign, and then I'm gonna create that text. And I'm gonna create that text by taking this JN, which is the first part, and then I'm gonna do the ampersand, to do the plus sign, and in quotations, I'm gonna provide the remaining text. And that remaining text after JN is exclamation sign and C4. And this is our range reference as total. So if I look at this, see it's gonna say January C4. If I track this down, it's gonna go February C4, March C4, because we're using this text on the left to build this. But this is just text so far. But because we can take text and treat it as range using indirect function, what I could do, I could just simply put indirect right around this whole thing. And now that text is gonna be treated as a range, like a reference. And the moment we do that, see, that's gonna pull the number from the appropriate tab from the same cell. I'm gonna actually delete this and we'll do total here, and now I can have one formula, I can drag it down and get my totals for all months. So now we have January total, there it is. And if I go back, February, there it is. The next month, well, hopefully you get the idea. So using indirect function, I was able to basically create the reference and then take that reference and as indirect function, use that and apply and get my totals. And then I can go here and do the total for the whole thing using my sum function. I'm gonna make this bold and there we have it. That's our final result. So one thing to keep in mind is that indirect is only useful for references. You cannot put a whole formula that you build as text. Let's say 
to put a formula sum something 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 and put that whole text inside of indirect function that will not work only references will work inside of indirect so with this let me try to give you another example so let me go to this tab well actually it's a different spreadsheet but nevertheless so let's say this is our sales data and we have sales from different years now if you look here we have products tab where we have cost and prices for different stock numbers right and those are the stock numbers we sell here and then our cost for this items changes over time so in 2017 for example if you look at this item it was 2344 in 2016 it was cheaper and 2015 it's even cheaper so the cost for the product went up for these items so we might want to be able to just pull that cost information to this tab but the cost is not going to be the same all the time it's going to be different depending on the year when we sold it so if we sold it in 2015 we need to go to this 2015 tab and pull that information if it's in 2016 it's going to be from 2016 tab and so on hopefully that makes sense first i'm going to before i do this cost let's just quickly get the year so i'll say year and Hopefully I'll spell this right this time. And then we'll use function year to actually get the year out of the date. I'm gonna close parentheses, double click to drag this down and that should give us the year of the sale. Now, let's say I don't have this multi-year situation. I just have to do this for just one tab for 2017. So in that case, we can solve this problem using VLOOKUP. So if you don't know about VLOOKUP, I have videos covering this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do VLOOKUP and then the key is gonna be stock number. That's the matching value, comma. I'm gonna go to this products tab, select this range right here. That's gonna be the range. I'm gonna lock the range pressing F4 comma the cost is going to be one two three four five the column number five comma and finally this is going to be exact match which is false or zero i'm going to hit enter if i double click this this will basically just pull cost just from this products tab now this is not a video about vlookup so i don't want you to concentrate on vlookup too much if you don't know vlookup but that's really not the point of this video this video is about really utilizing indirect and it doesn't really matter what this function is the whole point of what we're trying to do here if you look at this function right now that i made the reference i have here that's pulling from this products 2017 and i'm actually going to remove this end range right here so it basically just drags all the way down in the other sheet but really the key thing here is that what we need to do is this if this year on the left is 2015 this reference should have been products space 2015 because that's the name for 2015 tab and then it would still be the same range because the range is really the same on all of these tabs it's just going from a through e it's the same layout so really the only thing we have to worry about is this part this products is either going to be 2015 when it's 2015 it's going to be 2016 so we're going to have to go to this products 2016 tab when it's 2016 and so on so what i need to do i need to somehow build this text and then use it inside of indirect function to make it happen. So first of all, let me try to build that text without touching this. So I'm gonna go here and do equal sign. And because it's text, it's gonna go in quotations. So I'm gonna put that whole thing with all the single quotes, everything else inside of quotations from one end and the other. So this is gonna give me that. I'm gonna move this this way a little bit so now what i need to do i need to grab this 2017 this year part from here from the cell 
And for that, we need to break this down a little bit. So this is gonna go from here all the way up to this space. So after the space, I'm gonna break it with a quotation sign and do the end sign, which is the plus. Then I'm gonna add this reference for the year 2015, then do another end sign and then do another quotation because now I have to get back to this text over here. So this may be confusing because this moves it to the next line. So maybe watch this formula here on top here so you can see what happened. So, and that may be that I have some extra spaces that I need to solve here. So let's take a look. So we have this products with a space after the S. Then I'm gonna have H2, which is gonna be the year 2015. Then after the year, I don't really need this year anymore because that's where the year is gonna come from. So I'm gonna remove that part. And in quotations, again, it's gonna be that single quote, the exclamation sign, basically the rest of what the range reference was. So I need to make sure that whatever I build here works. And when I hit enter, it produces an accurate reference. So if I drag this down, see it goes 2015, that's 2015. A through through E, then 2016, then 2017, then 2016 again. Now we have a text reference. This is not a reference, it's a text reference. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna copy that whole thing without equal sign. I'm gonna hit escape. I'm not really trying to change this, so I'm gonna go back here. And what I'm gonna do, instead of using this, which is the current reference. I'm gonna just switch that with a function in direct and then paste that text range right in here inside of that indirect function. So now again, because this gets too long, it moves to the next line. But if you watch here, see it's this our indirect function and it has that text concatenated right inside of it because it's inside of indirect function, it will work now as range. So if I hit enter, that works. Now I'm gonna clear this. I'm gonna also clear all of these going down, command up to get to the top, and then double click to send that formula down. And what's gonna happen now, if we check this, this is the stock number ending with 590, see it's cost 544 and that's for 2015 year. So if I go 2015, that's 544. See if I go to 2016, it is not, it's a different price. So now I was able to pull it from the right tab. Now let's look at this one. So this is 374 ending and the cost is 6631. That should be coming from 2016 tab. So 6631, 374. So 374, 6631, that's accurate. Let's look at different tabs. See, that same item has a different price. So we're getting right prices from right tabs. Let's check one more, 590 again. See, this is actually the same item as it's on top, but because now we're looking at 2017, the price is different. So if I go 590, 2017, it should be 2344. And it is, there it is, 590. The most powerful uses for indirect is mostly when you're trying to use it to build these names of tabs in a dynamic way. And this was one example of doing it. There are many different ways you can apply this really unlimited. Once you understand that it's basically just text and by building that text, you have to create the right reference, then you should be able to use it appropriately. You just have to make sure you clearly understand what the range reference text needs to be and don't miss any single codes or exclamation signs or anything like that. If you miss one character and it's not a valid range reference, it's not gonna work. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.